As long as I can remember, I've been infatuated with wildlife. While studying wildlife biology as an undergrad, I began working with Dr. Ray Matlack at West Texas A&M University. We conducted research on various projects, which opened many doors. We gained access to species of animals that normally are not encountered. Of these, bats are a rarity. Seven grams. People fear bats, which is odd considering most people will never see a bat or have contact with one. To me, they are majestic. Not varmints cutting through skies on wings of pestilence landing in your hair. Scientifically, what we have learned about bats paints an entirely different story than the ones generally associated with them. Most bats are small creatures weighing as much as a few nickels and are capable of great feats. Bats are the only mammal capable of true flight as their wings, simple in structure, are merely no more than elongated hands. Each species of bats possesses wings specifically evolved in shape and structure to suit their roosting habits, feeding routines, and flight patterns. Bats roost in a variety of places, man-made structures, crevices, and in foliage. Worldwide, bats specialize in diverse diets, ranging from insects, fish, fruits, and flowers. They serve as pollinators and protectors of crops. Only three or so species feed on blood, and none of these call Texas home. 33 species of bats have been recorded in Texas, more than any other state. Given the diversity of bats the Lone Star State boasts, it can safely be said that bats are one of the state's most iconic wildlife species. Declared the official flying mammal of Texas, the Mexican free-tail bat is the bat of Texas. Drab in color, these bats live up to their name as they have a tail that extends beyond the patagium. Ranging statewide, these bats are a friend of the farmer. Historically, guano produced from massive free-tail bat colonies was harvested as a rich fertilizer. One prey item that these bats fancy is the corn earworm moth, a notorious crop pest. A 2006 study showed that the consumption of agricultural pests by Mexican free-tail bats saved farmers more than $700,000 per year in crop value alone within an eight county region in South Central Texas. With the exclusion of colonies in Far East Texas, Mexican free-tail bats migrate down south where they overwinter in Mexico to avoid wintry weather in October. Around late February, the bats reclaim their Texas roost. The return of Mexican free-tail bats to Texas has become a welcome spectacle. This species comprises the largest bat colony in the world, Bracken Cave. The cave, which harbors more than 15 million bats, is just a short drive from San Antonio. We are at Bracken Cave and we have the opportunity to film here, which is a really big opportunity. Um, it's very big um, because for first and foremost, we get to film 15 million bats and that's what you're hearing behind me. They're gonna come out of that cave. These colonies and others throughout Texas are so large, they can be seen on weather radar during emergence. As the bats start to circle in the cave, momentum outside the cave grows. The crowd begins to rise to their feet. Hawks are seen cruising nearby in the skies. And snakes take their place near the mouth of the cave. Once the bats breach the opening, 15 million bats pour out, appearing as a smog, choking out the sunset. Grouped together in a giant vortex, they swarm in synchrony. They swarm as one giant entity.
down in front of the cave entrance, I laid on my back and I looked up at the vortex of bats swirling above me. The center of the bat vortex shifts its course, winding from left to right. From the vortex, separate rivers of bats stream off into the distance. Bats fill the human air and rise higher and higher, concerned with only the foraging ahead of them. Unaware or fearless of the predators and crowd that now surround the roost, the bats emerge to reclaim the night sky. Weighing the equivalent of three nickels, Mexican free-tail bats reach altitudes as high as 10,000 feet and use high tailwinds to clock speeds as high as 60 miles per hour. The utilization of altitudes and winds has seen these bats disperse more than 50 miles from their roost. However, more than distance is needed for a forge to be successful. Once in the air, a game of aerial warfare begins. Bats use a variety of cues to navigate our world, from smell, vision, and echolocation. Echolocation is the process of producing ultrasonic pulses or sounds. Once emitted, these pulses rebound off foreign substrates and are interpreted by the bat. Bats can interpret distance, direction, shape, speed, and texture of substrates, including their prey items. To forage, they must emit echolocation signals and decipher the signals in milliseconds. The night air is full of signals, some audible to us. Mexican free-tail bats will spin dust to dawn on wings foraging for prey items like flying ants, beetles, and the notorious crop pest, corn earworm. As a bat approaches prey, echolocation pulses become more rapid until they form what is referred to as a feeding buzz. A bat can emit up to 200 pulses per second. Should two bats become pitted against one another in the chase for prey, they will engage in aerial sabotage with the hopes of gaining one up on the other. Mexican free-tail bats use interference calls to jam the signals of others. This particular call, if well-timed, can lower another free-tail bat's ability to capture prey by more than 80%. It's a battlefield out there. Not only must bats be wary of winged predators such as hawks and owls, they must avoid wind farms, for if a bat ventures too close to the blades, certain death will follow. Proximity to the blades can cause a rapid change in air pressure that ruptures blood vessels or results in a collision with the swirling blades. Undaunted by the challenges that lay ahead, the bats sally forth from the cave and do what nature intended them to do. The physiological abilities and perseverance in a challenging world, as well as their ecological importance, adds to the fascination surrounding these phenomenal creatures. Our understanding of bats, their behavior, and how they fit into our fragile ecosystem is lacking in many regards. Much stands to be learned. Look at my your shirt. I continue to travel and film the common, endangered, and even private wildlife within the states. No matter how intriguing the species, nothing has left me in awe quite like bats. <laughs>